Oh, he does have enough people to come up. I don't know why so many people who apparently have the ability just don't appear in my um invite thing. But yeah, what's up? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. Yo, what's up, dude? How are you doing? I'm all right. What um, rational reasons do you think you have for the existence of God? I would say so. I'm using the transcendental argument. So it would be most worldviews are constructed of three main ideas, right? It would be epistemology, ontology, uh, and ethics. And I would say the not pointing towards a god would give you no actual presupposition for the ability to conduct logic because logic is an invariant, um, non-material thing that you're tapping into. So if you were yeah, to say so that, I don't. So that's already wrong. Logic okay. is invariant. Second, there's no argument even proposed there. Um, and yeah, typically the tag argument is just it's just a conceptually confused mess. No one in contemporary philosophy takes it serious. Not theists, not atheists. There's like actually almost like less All than right, a well, dozen. Debunk it then. Debunk it. You know, Come on, I don't want to hear. Oh well, ooh, first that's, it's that's, not okay. Well, okay, well look, yeah. That's so a first, to authority fallacy, wouldn't it be? Um, if no. other people don't agree, yeah, that's what that is. Appeal to authority fallacy. No, no, that's not what an appeal to authority is. That do other think, people wait, don't do you, take it seriously. How does that give any justification for why my argument's wrong? Wait, that someone well, else doesn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, you need to take philosophy 101, dude. <laughs> uh, okay. Hello. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, so are there any rational uh, reason to believe in God? I believe uh, there is. Uh, I do think that there's uh, a rational reason or a factor to actually believe in a, a in a deity or in a creator <clears throat> the reason is the reason will be uh now i have to tell the source because it's someone else's idea so i have to tell who that person is so that uh because i didn't actually come up with the, with this idea before i share it uh Just now i'm watching believe, yeah. okay so i don't actually have to tell the name just tell me the reason believe in god okay so there are medicines and there are uh creativity uh like uh you know and herbs and stuff uh you know animals also contribute to a lot of medicine advancements and stuff and that tells us that there must be a creator to actually put it in a nature so that he knows what will happen later so i think the Sorry, way that the reason the, believe in god? i said uh like solution being inside the universe instead of an out uh for, for us to use for Wait. medicine for you for us to what's use the for reason medicine. to believe in god uh as i said there are things that are found in herbs uh, and animals for us for as a solution for uh, you know a disease uh and uh some problem okay but what's the reason to believe in god if there is no god and uh things were just happening randomly who put those uh solution inside the universe not, they're not being a god doesn't entail anything happening randomly in fact i'll probably at least insofar as that i've communicated with theists they're the ones who believe in randomness so i don't know you're even and that's just a question that's not a reason just so if there is no god there's no coordination uh in uniformity uh, within the universe right no that doesn't follow you would have to make an argument for that if there's no deity if there's no creator of the universe the, the things that we see and observe that are materialistic if they doesn't if they don't have immaterial source or undetectable force then things will not be consistent or uniform because What's the argument because as i told you if there is no create like i just told you if there's no creator if i lived in a world where there's no god there's no creator things could, can't be uniform because there's no one that's, to actually that's, it. that's just begging the question and that's not an argument either so you're saying that if so obviously it's not a contradiction right of course you can have some metaphysically naturalistic world that has uniformity you can even be a realist about uniformity <laughs> so i don't know what you're talking about so of course there are there probably are atheists some of, uh, probably not a lot but you know you can believe either in uniformity in a realist sense that's either naturalistic or in a platonistic abstract domain or some other sense of metaphysically abstract domain of you know uniformity or you can even be a fictionalist about uniformity in any sense you can believe in uniformity and still be an atheist or even not even just an atheist what you're positing as a you know there being 
some metaphysical naturalist. Again, you can believe in supernatural and be an atheist. Atheism isn't naturalism. That's wrong. You can, there are atheists who are supernaturalists. Again, atheism is just a belief that a mind didn't create the universe and nothing about, first, no, no one's convinced. No one, I don't know, a single academic philosopher who has this view, even apologist or theist, that if there's no supernatural, unless you're talking about like a presuppositionalist, but I have no reason to suspect if there is no supernatural substance, the natural, the natural world can't be uniform. What's the argument for that? Second, you can believe in supernatural and be an atheist. So that's not even an argument. That's but you have to be an argument. materialist. It's not, it's not, no, you don't. That's not even, that's not what atheism is. Atheism is a dogmatic view. It's not. A, it's not a metaphysical view. It's not a view about substance. A atheism okay. is just merely not having the belief in some metaphysical entity. It's not the view that you're committed to some metaphysical substance. So you no nothing about atheism has to do with met with metaphysical materialism or naturalism. You don't have to be a materialist and be an atheist. Okay, so if but, uh, yeah, I, I am a naturalist. I am a met metaphysical naturalist. Okay, now, can you just explain to me what's the argument that if there's no supernatural, then there's no uniformity in nature? Yeah. Okay. What's because, the yeah, because the reason will be that uh, <clears throat> the there's a natural observation that we make whenever we actually uh, like think. For example, there's a law of gravity that we abide by when we are living here on this planet Earth, right? So, how do we know that this same law will apply tomorrow, right? How do That's we know just, that it will remain okay. consistent? Okay, okay. If Let's not ask, okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not ask okay. stupid questions. Just provide the argument. You, your incredulity doesn't substantiate the claim. It's not incredulity. Uh, you, but... Well, look, yeah, you literally are saying, because I can't understand how there would be this generalization the next day about uniform universal laws of the natural system, that there's nothing that would seem to maintain or allow for this generalization to persist. And I will posit a supernatural explanation merely because I can't understand how it's the case naturalistically. That's incredulity. Literally an argument from ignorance. Now, do you have like an actual argument that substantiates if you're a metaphysical naturalist, then you can't have uniformity rather than saying, I don't understand how you can have uniformity on a naturalistic account. Therefore, I'll posit a supernatural entity. Okay. So then you have no reason to actually believe in a supernatural entity. Just merely the fact you don't understand how you're not aware or you don't understand how there can be some model of uniformity that's consistent with me metaphysical naturalism isn't reason to believe that a supernatural entity. Yeah, like, I don't get it. That. Because okay, well then just come back and we actually have an argument. I, I, Oh, that guy disconnected. Um, let's see who else we can get up here. Let's spam like the live everyone so we can get more people on here, get some more people on the panel because I'm, I really don't want to be waiting. So if you can do me a favor and invite. I ran. Yeah. Guys, I'm a really good track star. By the way, I just graduated high school yesterday. No joke. I got a lot of photos with friends, but unfortunately, most of my friends I didn't get to get photos with, but I got a good deal of photos, at least like, I don't know, with like, like 15 of my friends. Oh, Mike can prove the existence of God. No, yeah, I, I hear him pastor all the time. He's a really good evangelist. I know he's a Baptist. It's the only right denomination, stuff like that. You know, I can't bring up Mike. I'm not trying to get embarrassed again. I already ran from someone. We got to, you know, chill out. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm actually a Krishlam. So I'm a, I'm a compatibilist with Christianity and Islam. So I might be a Baptist Krishlam. Does that count? Come on, y'all. Let's spam like the, let's spam like the live. Share around. We got to get someone up here. Also, that, that tag dude was so, he just like said that I don't know if philosophy 101 and left. Um, well, in my view, basically, um, Allah and Yahweh had a combined forces like, uh, like Voltron to, you know, manifest the universe to existence. But ever since, um, you know, the charges of Allah being a pedophile. Um, he disowns his, like, older brother. Um, so now they act like each other don't exist. But they both know that they it took the two of them hand in hand to create the universe. That's my view. Let's see who we can get up. Come on, guys. Let's spam like the live.
Seriously, I, I don't get money. I don't get anything out of it. I just get more guests up here. So I'm not trying to wait. Seriously, let's try and see who can bring up here on the panel. And this dumb Parker Scott guy is still here. Come on, y'all. Spam like the live share around 10 when you know. Yo, Rex here, my boy. You got to come up here. I'm bored. Of course, I know what nominalism is, but. Oh, what's up, Mike? Also, uh, this Luis guy, you can ask your question on the panel if you're able to come up. I don't like talking with chat. It promotes too much people to like think I can just like yap in with the chat for too long, and I'm not interested in that. I just want to get some people up here. What's up, Mike? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I wanted to address that, the Parker guy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like... Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> there's, can, like, can you point out a flaw within my view? Just want to see if you can do that. Cause a lot of people I don't know saying. why he ran away so fast. Like I can, this Parker guy. Okay, well, first he said an appeal to authority. Appeal to authority is citing an authorial figure as like um like some substantiation for some claim, which is different from like a sample size of population, right? Which is just going to be like enumerative induction from like um you know academic belief, which is how like typically we consider evidence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like in fact, most of your beliefs are probably based on like presumably you haven't seen the solar system, but you believe that you know. There's a certain arrangement of a certain number of planets that science, you know, presumably states that you believe based on the consensus. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a difference between an appeal to authority, which is citing a figure and citing the consensus. I said like right. less than a, do a dozen academic philosophers who are theists even use tag as a as an actual argument. Um, also, this guy obviously doesn't he know what he's talking about because what a transcendental is, is um the way Kant describes a transcendental is a thing that's like, some necessary constitutive of experience. And in fact, he only took there to be three um, transcendental space, time, and causality. He he doesn't say these conceptual frameworks. He doesn't, the transcendentals aren't just like conceptual frameworks. They're like, um, there's the like metaphysically features of uh, non-vertical perception. That's Kant's view, right? So if you're going to use transcendentals in the academically astute way that, you know, the way Kant uses them, He's just going to deny math, logic, and all the other stuff you described was even a transcendental. So you're saying the precepts are using transcendentals completely wrong? <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> That's hilarious. Also, I don't know what it means to say what explains logic. Um, first, an explanation is a causal, is a type of causal explanatory relation. And logic wouldn't feature in a causal relation because the relata is non eventual. So that's just a category error, number mm -hmm. one. Um, and it's just like you got to use some like brain power you're treating logic as a phenomena like what the hell are you even saying that's like seriously um also even realists about logic you know the people who have this abstract commitment to logic there's even you know naturalistic realists but those are like we're not going to talk about that because it's pretty much consistent with like anti-realism um but if you're going to be like a realist in an abstract sense like a platonist um well yeah even platonists don't believe that logic's explained they don't they don't take it things of the platonic realm are explanons. So there's not going to be an explanation, another category here. Mm -hmm. um, um, also, presumably when you say what explains something, the explanatory relation, you know, an explanatory relation is inferential. What system deals with inferences? Logic. So when you say what explains logic, you're quite literally saying what logic justifies logic. Like, I don't, I don't even know what you're saying. It's just <laughs> right. incoherent. Like, it's like what existence like, explains existence. It's like, what? Yeah, exactly. Like it's just like, such a stupid, conceptually confused question. It's just like a number of category errors on category errors. Um, so yeah, Kant Kant only takes the view there's three transcendentals. A transcendental is nothing of what you described. 
Um, I mean, I already described a number of uh, things like, you know, conceptual errors that you've made. Um, and also, not clear why he said that logic is invariant. That was another thing he said. That's just trivially wrong because logic, as long as, I mean, along with every philosophical uh, system, right, these conceptual tools that we use to navigate um, reality or conceptual schema, these things are, are tentative insofar as they, there is revision to logic. The basic example is look at Aristotelian logic to, you know, contemporary classical logic. They're not the same. Logic isn't invariant. Um, mm, yeah. So, and also he said, um, yeah, so just to, because you're confused about an appeal to authority, it isn't improper to say that, you know, there's, we can infer almost trivially that there is some sufficient reason to why the outstanding population of theologian, theologians who are academic philosophers and qualified academic philosophers, in fact, PhDs, that less than a dozen, not even a handful of them are apologists, or I mean, presuppositional apologists. That's because it's just not, if, I mean, if there's like a school of theology that almost like only like 10 PhDs hold to, there's obviously something wrong, right? That's like saying, you know, yeah. 10 physicists believe in the big bounce theory. Now, of course, I'm not saying that falsifies the view, but that of course is reason giving to like not be committed to the view almost trivially. Like if, you know, what I, I don't know how many academic philosophers there are. I'm gonna just say, I mean, let's just say scientists in, instead. Let's say there's um 10, 10 physicists who believe, um in like an additional planet in the solar system. And then the other 15,000 PhDs just don't believe that. Oh, I mean, are you, is you're going to believe your beliefs are obviously towards not the minority view, right? Some of that might be psychological, merely psychological, but again, that's just like a hermeneutic, obviously like going with consensus. If like some of the brightest minds who've endeavored and navigated the sciences and, you know, methodological naturalism and understanding the world and testing, for centuries and centuries have only came to the conclusion that only 10 have came to the conclusion out of like another 20,000 that this, you know, view is like, by the way, the only people I've ever seen who um argue precept are actually people who got their PhDs from um, apologist schools, right? Not actual, like, <laughs> exactly. I've never, exactly. I've never seen a single one who had like a credible degree. <laughs> In fact, I've never even, again, so like I don't even Baptist, think Holy Baptist University. Exactly. <laughs> They're like terrible. It's like, I don't understand how anyone thinks precept is like, it's not even an argument. I've never seen it formalized. That's one. So it's not, I wouldn't even say it's an argument. Um, uh, and it never, the mm -hmm. point is, uh, I, I talked to Jay Dyer, like I think a couple years ago, and he used the tag argument. And then when he, he talked about universals, which I rejected, right? You can just say, Hey, this, I, we can hold to nominalism. He obviously kicked me, but everybody thinks that, uh, he destroyed me because I reject universals. <laughs> like, it's just hilarious to me how, how they work. And I'm assuming he just didn't like have an argument. Yeah, he never does, right? He's talked to hundreds yeah. of atheists. He never can give the contradiction. In, in yeah. Atheist. It's not even an argument. Like, look, like it's not even relevant whether there's a contradiction. That's just to say right. it's, log like, yeah, it's yeah. logically impossible. But even then, that just illuminates some incoherence because when you say, you know, what grounds logic, right? And then mm -hmm. your grounding is the fact that it's logically necessary then you're not, you're using logic to ground logic, just in the same sense, like this other dude, how I explained when you say what explains logic and an explanation is an inferential like relation. Of course, an inference is a logical notion. You're using logic. Mm -hmm. It's just like, they're, they're so like oblivious to the fact it's like, I don't, I don't even know what they think they're doing. I, I genuinely like would love to be one to introspect on how like <laughs> their brain is structured in such a way in which they like think these like um, mentally well, deficient things. Yeah. They may be missing some of their uh, prefrontal cortex. Not yeah. Also, <laughs> it's funny too, because when they say like what grounds logic, this dude didn't use that, that language, but he said like what explains logic. Um, but typically people say like grounds, especially G Dyer. I'm sure, I'm sure you remember him saying that, uh, yeah. specifically, but that's just also a misuse of grounding relations. I also am like an eliminativist about grounding, but the way like Kit Fine defines like grounding is like, um, like this metaphysical relation. It's like, um, the ball is red and they want to say like, um, red is grounded in a ball um it seeming it seemingly is just like a, a relation between um an instantiable um and a thing of which it instantiates in but that seems like an error because well first i would just want to clarify what are you instantiating like logic in 
presumably they want to say the platonic realm or something sometimes they want to say just in god mm -hmm. right that's just going to lead to like the conversation just ends there because nothing they're saying is going to be like we just reach like a roadblock dialectically because don't know what the hell they're saying um but you what's say your, it's, what's your you know, in what like um <clears throat> like the metaphysics of like logic and stuff like that oh yeah well i'm just a fictionalist about logic fictionalist yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm a nominalist. I, cool. Yeah, me too. I don't think I'm like a plat I don't think I'm a platonic realist about anything. I'm I'm not a Platonist at all in any sense. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, me either. It doesn't even but, make sense to me. <laughs> to even appeal to no, yeah, it it, it doesn't make sense to me either. In fact, I would say um, that it seems like um, this platonic like Platonism when it's used particularly to to explain stuff, it's just like a just so story. Like yeah, yeah, it's, it seems that off to me. But yeah, guys, let's not spam like the live, share around, share to people that, you know, have questions can come on podium and ask them or have arguments or reasons to believe in God rationally. Um, spam like the live helps the algorithm. We can get some people up here. Um, unless you guys are fine with hearing us yap, let's not do that because I don't like yapping. I want to argue with someone. So, you know, bring your best friend who argues that Jesus resurrected or whatever. Bring them up here. Send them my way. I hate debating the resurrection. Just so boring. No, I, I don't debate any of those. Like, I don't debate anything relating to, like, internal consistency of the Bible or any of that yeah, at all. It's just so boring to me. I know there's people who debate, like, you know, Noah's Ark never happens. I would never waste my time with any of that. <laughs> like, I can, like, I did this with Matt Adams, actually, um, not too long ago. I think it was, like, what, a couple of days ago or last week I talked with him? I think it was, like, four days ago or something, three days ago. And I just granted him that Jesus resurrected. And he was like making such a big deal about it. He was like, oh, wow, you're the most honest atheist, <laughs> which is so funny because I, I kept telling him, well, just to be clear, granting doesn't mean I actually have the dog's ass attitude. I don't believe in the proposition Jesus resurrected. I'm just granting it to see how you derive God exists. He's like, no, yeah, but that's something that most atheists won't do. You're so honest. I'm like, what am I being honest about? Yeah, I'm, I am granting it. If that's what you're saying, I'm honest about that. I'm actually granting it. Like, I'm not going to back, like walk back the claim I granted it and ask like for the argument for Jesus is like, but yeah, even like any of the, his, we, you can just like grant all the historical facts of the Bible. Still wouldn't believe in the Christian God. Like, you know, obviously I just use Graham Oppie's stalking horse. You can like literally explain any phenomena with like a naturalistic hypothesis. It's going to be, it's not going to be a just so story. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be ontologically sim simpler, right? It yeah. does integrate with sciences. It's empirically verifiable. And we actually can generate evidence. I don't know how you generate evidence non-testably. Um, so, yeah. And it's just obviously ontologically economic, economical. So it's just yeah. I was, and that's I was one last thing. Let go. I was debating this guy a couple of days ago on the argument from psychophysical harmony, and he was like, uh, "Well, under my hypothesis of theism, we can explain and predict why we'd have moral agents because we have a good God. But under naturalism, there, there's there is no prediction made about moral agents." And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, we could just posit some kind of like you know naturalist position to you know moral agents." He was like, "No, no, you can't do that. Uh, no, no, you're not. That's not an explanation. There's nothing." Nothing in naturalism that explains that but if you're doing that with theism why can i do that with naturalism you know mm -hmm. i mean yeah i mean it, maybe you would predict that if a god was all good that they would uh create moral agents um but i don't know it seems like um not there's not even evidence going there yeah and like we can make um like you know a competing hypothesis that there's like some other God that makes it seem as if he is good and we would also like maybe expect the same things or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. of course yeah we can posit something like evil god but i'm saying under naturalism we can also we can also use naturalism to make predictions about moral agents too by positing some kind of like you know quantum state yielding different possibilities and ours is just one like we can still come up with scenarios that explain moral agents without theism so i don't know why um, they have the advantage yeah obviously i mean i wouldn't personally i just wouldn't use like quantum theory or any of that i feel like that's too like ill elegant um but yeah i mean obviously you can just like do the same thing with naturalism that you would predict moral agents would come i don't like obviously like it's obviously logically possible so i don't understand why they act like it's not predicted. yeah then, like roger said if, if when i pressed him forward about yeah you know, like when we talk about the prior probability of god you're saying you know talked about the bible that just completely lowers the probability that the that his theism is correct because now it's like, okay, why is there evil? We can, you know, we can pretty much stack on all those other problems. So it's, it's like fine tuning, but just like, 
easier to debunk. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And fine tuning to me is actually evidence against God. <laughs> it's actually evidence against theism because we wouldn't, we would expect, yeah. we would expect a universe that was tuned for life to be only life, I think. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't understand how they would generate any prediction about like a God making yeah. a world this specific. It's like, oh, well, we finally got a guest up here. Yeah, what's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> So yeah, do you have I'm any rational deep, reasons I believe, to believe that? Yeah, I mean, my personal rational belief is life. I mean, if you if you think about it, there's no real scientific evidence to life's creation. Why is here? Why do we even have purpose? And even then, we do give ourselves. Wait, what are you? What are you talking about? Hold on. There's no scientific evidence of, about what? About life's purpose. There's no scientific evidence to why even life exists. Like that's a logical concept. So why not put in like there's something out? Well, okay. Well, okay. well there's already. Well, the first one is the sciences aren't going to talk about purpose. They don't believe that's a naturalistic feature. In fact, they would be like um, either like relativist or maybe emotivist about like purpose, right? Some like subjectivist views. Um, and typically they're not going to be, obviously a scientist isn't going to talk about like, we're trying to gather evidence for this metaphysical like thesis. Well, right? So when we talk about like values. I don't, I don't mean, like, okay, so look, it's just it's just trivial that scientists aren't gonna have evidence for this because this isn't even like in the scientific domain. I now, mean, like, I'm sorry, but I kind of I kind of misinterpreted my argument. I mean, more like reason for life even existing. Like, you know, there's no reason for like like. You mean reason life, external no to reason us? For, you know what I'm saying? What do you, okay, by reason for us to exist, are you meaning like an explanation for why we exist? Exactly, like including consciousness. Oh well, even look, about, even well, that's just false. That we have. No, but that's just false. Like. There is like abiogenesis, which is like an explanation for life. That's a theory. And again, even if you look in abiogenesis, yeah, it is a theory. Those. those so, you, but you just said there's no evidence. But again, a theory is just a theory. Again, those... yeah, but you made wait. You just made the claim it has no evidence, and now you're admitting it's a theory. A hypothesis is just like some. It's just going to be like a story that explains data. Again, and a, a theory is just like some successful hypothesis that gathered gathered sufficient evidence to the promote theory. the hypothesis. Doesn't mean that so, is right. Wait, what do you? Okay, look, you. Just, is is it a theory or not? It's a theory. It's nothing more than okay, so, what they think. Okay, happens. so so abiogenesis does have evidence. It has evidence, but again, it's just a theory. Okay, so well, now you okay, so now you, we're fine with you conceding. I'm not the fact conceding that you on anything. Wait, no, okay, you initially said there's no evidence of there being reason oh, for life, and I, now you're admitting that there's reason that there's I, evidence. There is no reason. There's no evidence that that's what started life. Just as much as you say, oh, abiogenesis. Hold on. I could say God wait. did it. Okay, so you, are you walking back the claim that it's a theory? It's still a theory. It's just a theory that is, that that's what started life. And even wait, then, okay. you look at each no, 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 no. Wait, wait. wait. Look, okay, look, okay, calm down. Calm down. No, 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 no. Calm down. Calm down. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Do you, okay, calm down. Do you understand that a hypothesis and a theory are different? Yes. Okay, so you understand a hypothesis is a theory, or a theory is a hypothesis with evidence. No, a theory and hypothesis. That is what a theory different. is. No, a hypothesis. What a theory is is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a final conclusion. A theory is no. No, no. What a theory is is just a hypothesis with evidence. A hypothesis is the conclusion. The theory is the start. I, they're no, the same, they're along no, the same. no, look, Brand, a hypothesis, the same no, line, no, 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 no. What a hypothesis is, is just a story that explains data. It's just supposed to be some positive story that has an explanatory relation to some observable phenomena. What a theory is, is that hypothesis that is plausible and generates evidence that's successfully motivating of the view of the hypothesis. That's what a theory is, right? You can read basic philosophy of science. Go read SCP. This is what a theory and hypothesis are standardly defined as real quick, by real PhDs. Quick. Okay. No, now a... you just said it's a theory. So now it's just, it's just going to be, I, baked, I, it's just, an, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not done. It's okay. just analytically baked in that it has evidence. Now are you going to walk back and say that's a hypothesis? Now going back into what I was saying, there's just, there's just a contradiction. The theory and hypothesis is if I conduct a, a complete hypothesis and I made the hypothesis that certain uh, characteristic or chemical A did this and I theor that whole time that could be false. So technically I theorized that chemical A or, or thing, whatever did this the whole time. The hypothesis came out to be false. It was always a theory. Those are two different things. Yeah, you're just confused. Again, you can read SCP. I can right? theorize you can just... something, but it's not a complete. It's yeah, look, complete no, 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 no. Not look, that's fine. Thing. You're just, no, that's fine. You're just conflating theory and hypothesis. A theory is a hypothesis with evidence. That's that's Maybe, all it is. What, what does this have to do with abiogenesis? Yeah, but again, okay, like, so you made a contradiction. My, my evidence that no, no, you, you didn't bring evidence to the table. You still have refuted down. that they only perform this. In stages. You they refuted not, what? They have not <laughs> not, like, wait, no, no, no okay, just to be clear, just to be clear. Again, hold on, calm down. Have to recreate I'm this. Not, I don't know you're over talking. I'm gonna need to mute you if you just don't stop talking. Okay, just to be clear, because you're like beyond confused. Um, first, you never even presented evidence. You're saying why didn't I refute your evidence? A refutation is the deflation of an argument. You haven't presented an argument either. Um. And yeah, you're just confused right. what a theory and hypothesis is. And you made a contradiction saying that there's no evidence in this hypothesis and a hypothesis, I mean, in a theory. In a theory, one of the necessary conditions that satisfy a theory 
It's just that it has evidence. So it's just analytically baked into what a, a theory is that has evidence. So you're making a claim it has evidence and it doesn't. So there's the contradiction. You didn't present an argument, nor have you ex presented any evidence. I don't even think you know what evidence. Clearly, you don't know basic scientific terms, like no. hypothesis, theory, and evidence. Do you, like, before we go on, when well, you use claims... Rebuttal. Are you ready for my rebuttal yet, or are you... Rebuttal of what? Initially what said, is it? Wait, what is there to rebuttal? That's, there that's is nothing the whole to rebuttal. point of science in, in itself to figure out why we're here, what's going on, what makes things... Okay, this guy, just, just go read. You, you don't even know, like, scientific nomenclature, like these, like, basic science terms. You're just wrong about them. Also, just to be clear, evidence is like a Bayesian notion. So when we talk about evidence, that's something else you wouldn't... <laughs> okay, I'm I'm already starting to lose my... My, uh... Whatever. Patience? Yeah, that, that guy's not capable of debating, actually. I debated him before. He's, he's... You can't talk to that guy. Yeah, it seems like it. But what's that, uh, yeah, wait, what's your name? Uh, well, my name is Christian. Dysfunction? Okay. Dysfunctional well, is my uh, username. Yeah, so what's up, Bob? I'm going to just call you Dis. What's your rational reason to believe in God? Uh, oh, I don't believe that there's a rational reason <laughs> to believe in God. Oh, sure. So um, why are you up here? Maybe a question or what? Oh, I just uh, popped up here to um, participate in debate. I mean, I love uh, participating in those, so. Oh, well, unfortunately, as this isn't like anyone joining in debate, my guess, but okay, um, no I, I can, if you want, you can follow me and I can gladly have you up some, some other time. Because there are times I bring up uh, multiple friends, like my friend Turns in, in uh, Kata. I'm fine with just bringing up a number of guests to like argue um, and stuff like that. But that's not really happening right now. Yeah, I got you. I'm really... Okay, well, have a great one. Um, and also, of course, like if you know anything, share to them. You got to get them up here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to steal their lunch money and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, well, everyone here, spam like the live, share around. Let's try and get someone up here. Also, Rockstar was lying about not being able to come up here. He's just running away from me, just to be clear to the audience. If you see Rockstar in the chat, um, I give you consent to, um, you know, bully him. Can you oil up? What the hell? Stay sane, stay sane, stay vegan. Yeah, by the way, you guys should be vegan. But I think you're you're easily, there's like, of course you could be sane without being vegan. In fact, most of the intellectual people I know are just not vegan. Well, actually not most, but I would say that the smartest people I know, the most, most of the intellectuals I know are vegan, but the smartest people I know are not vegan. But that's not like, I'm saying like, I, I would promote veganism, but you know, I just, black on black violence, that's not what's going on. See, Rockstar, now you're just making up fibs. Now you're giving me, like, fortification to, like, have my chat believe you. But come on, guys, let's let's get someone up here. Spam like the live helps the algorithm. Even if you're a theist and you don't like the live. Presumably, if you're a theist, you're waiting here to watch me debate someone who would either destroy me or I destroy. So I don't get money out of this. I don't get anything from likes. I don't care if you're a theist. If you want, if you're a theist waiting to see someone debate me, don't just not click like, you know, like the live. It only helps you. And maybe, maybe it helps you insofar as that you might, you know, clicking the live, you get like the, the one apologist that would destroy me, you know? So come on, guys, let's spam like the live and share to any of your friends who want to get destroyed by me, presumably. Okay, okay, enough with the vegan promotion, please. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, How what's up? Yeah, I'm good. I'm alright. I see the title says, "Are there rational reasons to believe in a God?" Right? Yeah. What rational reasons do you have to believe in God? Well, I always hear, you know, um, this following argument, and, I, and it sounds quite rational. It says, "Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause." Yeah. It so that quite argument. Rational. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the argument's invalid. Well, it's sorry, it's, it's valid. It's, it's not sound, um, obviously. In fact, if you just knew anything about like the terms you're using, it's just like obviously, just not not the case. Now, first, um, help, help me learn. You know, I want to I want to learn what's wrong. No, with yeah, yeah, me. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So first, everything that which begins to exist has a cause. If you're talking about beginning in an ontological sense, um, that's going to be like a type of ontological explanatory relation, not a causal one. So whatever begins to exist ontologically just necessarily wouldn't have a causal explanation for its existence. That So the first premise is just a, a simple category error. 
The second premise, which is a conditional statement, um, or no, the first one is everything that which begins to exist has a cause, the universe begins to exist, therefore. Well, okay, so this is predicate calculus. This isn't prop logic. So, um, um, so let's take it so, step by step so I can understand it. Let's simplify it. Yeah, so it's just for, for all, yeah, so it's so, for all so X. everything that begins to exist has a cause. Everything that begins to exist. Is that, yeah, is so, that a true statement or a, or no, a false no, no, statement? I, no, 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 no. I just explained that that's a category here. It's like necessarily not true. Like it's actually impossible. You can't actually, anything that begins to exist ontologically just doesn't have a cause explanation. So it's actually, it's, it's almost what? funny. It's like everything. Yeah. So it's almost like everything that which begins to exist doesn't have a cause. Unironically, it's almost like the opposite. Um, whoa, whoa, the universe whoa, whoa, begins whoa. to exist. Um, I'm not, yeah. Whoa, whoa, one second, sir. Um, everything that begins to exist, uh, no, everything um, that begins to exist has a cause. No, the yeah, universe so look. began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. So the first statement. Yeah, I didn't statement, need you to repeat that. Yeah, are you saying the first statement, can you- Is necessarily this, false. Yeah, how is it false? Can you tell me one situation yeah, where- I, I already, I already explained begin? it. Wait, I already explained it. I think you gotta, you gotta use like your listening ears. I, I re-explained. So if you know anything about standard metaphysics, what a causal relation is, is a type of relationship in which the relata are events. But when we talk about something beginning to exist in an ontological sense, the ontological relation would need an ontologically explanatory relation, not a causal explanatory relation. So the explanatory relation there would just entail category error. So in fact, everything that which begins to exist doesn't have a causal connection. Because within a causal okay. connection, it's just the relata being events. So in an instance in which there's an event, there's already a thing existing. So if there's an instance in which one of the relata is an item not existing, the relationship there is necessarily non-causal. So it's actually everything that which begins to exist doesn't have a cause. Can you so tell that, me the one opposite thing? Is true. Can you tell me one thing that began to exist without a cause? Yeah, I don't believe anything began to exist ontologically. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, maybe I'm confused. So f forget the first one then. The second one, which was um, the universe began to exist. Well, yeah. Again, I, I don't believe anything began to exist ontologically. So I'm not convinced the universe begins to exist. So the universe and, is and, eternal. And, 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 um, well, if by eternal you mean exists at every point in time, is that what you mean? Um, the universe existed and time existed always. Okay, so, is that, yeah, is that then, what you're then saying? No, I'm asking you by eternal, do you just mean exists at every point in time? Yeah, and time also existed forever. You would have to conclude that, right? I don't know what that means. Okay. Forever so, is a so, temporal notion. I don't know what it means time, for... Okay, so what, what I'm saying is either the universe and time and space all began to exist, or they have never okay, began, there, so there, they've wait, always wait, wait, been wait. there. Yeah. Wait, you're, you're, there, there's already an error, an obvious error. Began is a temporal a temporal term, you know that, right? Yeah. So when you when you say begin to exist, you're saying first point, first moment of time. So you're saying time has a first moment, moment of itself. I don't know, what that's just incoherent. There's like a clear contradiction. Time doesn't begin. Objects in time begin. Time itself can't begin. It's like, look, I can say a car is red. It doesn't make sense to say the red is red, unless you're saying something trivial, right? Yeah, red is red. Okay. Unless you're saying something different when you say the red is red. I don't know what you're saying. Okay, so of course, time, time doesn't begin. Always. Time, time hasn't begun, so time I, was I, always here. I don't, but by always, presumably by always, you just mean every point in time. Yeah. If you don't mean that, then I don't know what you're, what you're saying. And yeah, of course, time exists at every point of itself. <laughs> like, what? That's, that's again, a trivial statement. Like, I exist at every point I exist. Every instance I exist, I exist. Yeah, that's trivial. You're not saying anything informative, nothing substantive. You're saying okay. something that every, right, everyone sir. knows. I, under, I understand, sir. Try and just uh, dumb it down for me. I might be a little bit stupid or whatever, or not too knowledgeable. So, sir, you know when they speak about the Big Bang, they say time and space and the universe began, or did I understand no, that wrong? No, that's not what that is. No, the Big Bang okay. is just... Yeah, so the Big Bang is just uh, an integrative theory of cosmic inflation. The Big Bang doesn't talk about the universe beginning to exist. No scientist has talked about that. That's not even a scientific theory. That's like a metaphysical one. So scientists don't talk about the universe beginning to exist. What the Big Bang is, is just a model of expansion of the observable universe. Prior to the Big Bang, every scientist is going to tell you the universe still existed. The Big Bang doesn't talk about the universe coming into existence. It's just the beginning of the observable universe. Scientists actually, in fact, Alan Guth, the person who created or the most prominent person in the development of inflationary theory, he believes that the universe always existed. Right, he's the, the person who made like, the Big Bang. Which, I mean, yeah, it trivially so, does because so the time, universe is just space and time. So, so if time, I always exist... Matter, so time, space, and matter have always existed. They have, they didn't begin to well, exist. They don't have a starting I, point. I don't, I don't know what it means to say time began to exist. Again, that just seems to... Okay, like, they don't have a starting a category point. Here. They don't have a starting point. Yeah, but, Would you agree but with that? By, but by starting point, I don't know what you mean... Objects in time have a starting point. I don't know what it means to say time has a starting time point. Time itself doesn't have a starting point. Wait, time itself uh, didn't wait, start. Okay, just to be, just to be clear. 
Yeah. Wait, okay, just to be clear, what a starting point is, is a first instance of some sequence in time. But time doesn't have a first instance of itself. So t there is no such thing as a beginning of time. Yeah, so time has be. always existed. Yeah, necessarily. It, okay. there, it just doesn't, it's not even coherent that time has a beginning. Well, you know, religions like, I think, Islam, and maybe they claim that God created time and space and matter, and he's outside of them. Yeah, but those like are all that. incoherent Have you ever heard views. That? Yeah, but those are all just like people who don't really know what they're saying when they talk about these like concepts, which is typical, right? Like, of course, someone who doesn't really I don't know, know why I never thought study about philosophy. For, like, when I heard people say time started, I don't know why I didn't like think critically of that and say, how can time start? Now that you're yeah. questioning it, like, like it, you're right, it doesn't sound coherent. How can you say time starts? Yeah, because look, I start. Sense. Yeah, so just to yeah. be clear, what people mean by start is just a first instance in a sequence in time. That's what they mean. But when you say time starts, you're saying time has a first instance in a sequence of itself. Doesn't it's not coherent? I agree. I agree. Jesus Christ, man. So, and also uh, just to be clear, yeah. another one would just be when you say the universe has a cause. If you just read again, if you just read SCP, Stand for Encyclopedia, it's peer reviewed by PhDs. What causation is is just a relationship in which the relata, which a relata is just the things in relation, the th the, the things in relation are events. Okay, but again, what an event is is just an instance of space time, and space time is the universe. So what it what a causal connection is is just events that have an explanatory relation to each other. Like if I throw a ball and the ball shatters the window, you know, there's a causal connection because there's a connection between two events. But when you say what is the cause of the universe, what you're asking is what event explains the universe, but the universe is just a set of all events because an event is just an instance of space time, and the universe is just space time. So the universe encapsulates all events. So when you say what caused the universe, you're literally asking. What instance of the universe explains the existence of the universe? What that doesn't make any sense either. I don't know, man. We, I thought I, I pictured it quite easily. Like I thought, you know, there was God, right? And then the, you know, time, he's obviously outside of time, right? I don't know how, but that's how I learned it. And then he creates time, space, matter, energy, all of it. Uh, well, the there's universe, also a contradiction then, there. Because yeah. look, there's a clear contradiction because what time is understood to be is just change, the change of state of affairs, right? And like we exhaust the environment. The environment are not identical in two like instances right it's just like this there's like there's not going to be like a, a clear way of just articulating it because time no, is like, i, it, I fully like understand what you just said i fully understand like time is just change is happening so yeah god so at one god, point yeah, he yeah, doesn't an create anything that, exactly and then he next moment he's creating time space that itself is called time so there was time before god yeah. created time which is a contradiction exactly. yeah it doesn't it's crazy okay jesus lord have mercy this is uh all crazy stuff i don't know why people don't critically think about this i, I want to ask you one last question and then i'm going to leave i appreciate uh, this conversation um <clears throat> about 90 okay. percent or so of the human population today of the 8 billion uh, believe in some sort of a religion some sort of mm -hmm. a god right uh, 2 billion yeah. muslims 2.5 billion christians 1.2 billion hindus and then you have all the other religions uh, hundreds of them so why do you think that all or 90 something percent of us humans Believe in what we were just speaking about, that there was something behind this, a causation, there's a God, oh, this happens when you die. Why, why do you think all, you know, majority of humans believe in this? Why? Um, well, again, like another thing, like, you know, when we talk about folk people, folk people use terms they have all half-baked. You know, that's why now contemporary philosophy is pretty much just analytic philosophy, because they like to, you know, um, to introspect or, you know, reflect on the stringency of the language we use and, you know, clear up semantically what we're what we're asking when we use certain terms we're disposed to using which the folk don't right that's why epistemology is a whole field what, what do we mean by knowledge right and we try and like generate necessary and sufficient conditions for knowledge and stuff like that so like you know take a normal person who says that's not logical when they say like oh that that's not even that's not even logical um obviously they haven't studied formal logic so they're not using the terms properly so they have these concepts that you know don't reflect how the terms are actually used or the fields in which they're derived right most people don't understand have understandings of particles or there's lots of you know things that are present in um folks people's like conceptual scheme right certain items like particles and things of those nature and logic that they just don't really have fleshed out so when they go about rationalizing they're using these concepts they have like 0.0001 understanding of <laughs> maybe not at all in fact um they might even be using words and notions entirely proprietary or idiosyncratic such that they think they're coming to like uh, conclusions when first they don't really even know like inferential like reasoning they don't even have inferential reasoning skills if they haven't studied logic or like even rudimentary philosophy so it's unlikely just the fact um anyone who doesn't study philosophy would actually deduce some rational conclusion 
Uh, so that's just number one. And the fact the folk don't actually have these rational logical skills, of course, it's not, it's just going to be improbable. They actually generate, you know, actual conclusions. And, you know, there's also hundreds of thousands of people who believe in Bigfoot. There's millions of people who believe in aliens. Uh, maybe it's not as significantly large in population as the billions of people that believe in religion. Um, but, you know, there's still tens of millions of people who believe in aliens and still hundreds of thousands of people who believe in Bigfoot. Um, you know, lots of people have conspiracy type of thoughts. Um, it's just the types, the way they rationalize are so informal and so layman and also so confused in the types of concepts they employ in their rationale such that they infer these radical conclusions using systems of inferences they don't even actually understand. They don't even know logic, so it's just not likely they come to, you know, accurate conclusions. Um, that's why I don't really take the view on, you know, the population. You know, there's a lot, in fact, there's actually billions of people who are conspiracy theorists. So again, still not as big as religious people, but there are actually at least a billion people who believe in some sort, some sort of conspiracy theory. Um, and again, like, I'm, I'm not really, you know, maybe there's psychological, environmental explanations, their education status, indoctrination, lots of those factor into their explanation for why they're motivated in believing in God and, you know, these particular, like, practices and rituals of some religion. Um, but none of those would motivate me in um, believing the proposition is true. In fact, it's just like a fallacy of like appeal to population, right? Of course, unless you're talking about like the population of academic people who are qualified in fields, know what they're talking about, have had centuries of great minds working in fields and flushing out certain theories, concepts, uh, proposition. Yeah, let's even go with I them, I would right? take their view. Yeah, let's even mm -hmm. go with them. So let's say the, the intellectuals of the world, the scientists, the, the, the theologians, Major, the people that are well studied in these fields of existence of, you know, why we're here, things like that. Um, the majority of them, would you say they're still theists? Right? I, um, I would say so. I mean, I have, um, hold on, I have studies. I actually have the statistics on how many scientists are, um, are theists. But in terms of what I, you know, actually consider relevant, which is philosophy for, you know, justifying the belief in God, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't really care about this belief of scientists. In philosophy, the belief that a God exists is so is a very minute view. It's actually the minority view, okay. the disfavorable view. So in fact, most you know qualified PhD philosophers don't believe in a God, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds that sounds right. So philosophy is like constant questions, man. Like Jesus, most people don't don't do that. But anyway, dude, um, nice talking to you. Where are you from? You're from America, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. I'm gonna. S we're all searching. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Appreciate you. Yeah. No problem. Take care. Dude. Yeah. No. Definitely. Yeah. Take care. It's nice having you. Um. Let's see who else we can get here. Uh. Spam like the live. You know. Invite people. Actually, I'm a. I'm gonna invite Danny. I need him for clout for a moment. You can just. If you can come up, just you don't even need to talk if you don't want. To. You can just sit quietly. I just need to get some people up here. And it's been like I have been waiting 10 minutes apart from each talker. So I'm not interested in doing that. But also, what is Rasul talking about rambling? I was answering his question very precisely, but. Oh, do you have mod? Uh, no. Wait, how did you come up? Uh, I just asked to come up. Oh, I guess a mod accepted you. Wait, well, no, 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 wait, Who, who's the mod? Okay, mods just only let one person up at a time. You should let him up. I don't, I don't believe in a god. Uh, you just oh, okay. have to come up. Okay. Oh, I, wait, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to just drop you down. I don't know. If Hello. you have any questions, you can ask after him or whatever. I don't know who added you, but hey, what's up? What's going on? You you think you have any rational reasons to believe in god? Um, I do believe in god. I don't believe in the Christian god or the god of like most of the world religions i kind of see them as trying to approximate or how do i say it? i kind of see religion as artistic um how do i like artistic ways or cultural ways of sort of approaching the divine but my personal perspective on whether or not we um did you say sorry what was the question again do you think you have like a rational reason to believe in god Oh, that's a tough one. I feel like rational meaning on my own experiences and with what I've learned, for me, it's rational. Rational just meaning it aligns with like um, my logic, my experiences, sort of my belief set. 
but I'm not sure what you mean by your logic there. Like rationality doesn't like someone can do something that's rational within their belief set, like a Christian um, drinking wine as a twelve year old is rational under their um, belief set, right? Sorry, what? Like something is something is either deemed rational or irrational if it's like aligning with that person's personal creed, like something that's um, rational. No. Like I, I'm pretty sure that's like the definition, right? Like by rational, I just mean that you have epistemic reasons. Oh, okay, okay. And epistemic means more like evidence. Um, yeah, it can be. It uh, deals with you know inferential reasons to believe, evidential, you know, probabilistic, plausibilistic, deductive. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to understand exactly how you're asking it, because. So, so do you have like a justification for like the proposition? I, yes, I have, justi the universe? I have a justification for, for me, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't like be applicable to everyone. You know what I mean? And the, my justification would be, um, sort of personal mystical experiences that line up with mystical, like you could say religious or mystical or sort of transcendental experiences that line up with. I don't know what that means, but like, so, yeah, so I just want to know, um, what of your mystical woo woo experience makes you believe a mind created the universe um so i'm i'm, I'm basically making an inference because i don't know for sure but um let's say a mind an individual person has an experience where they witness something that they pot they um oh, sign or like what current scientists deemed impossible for someone to be able to witness like um remotely like say i am in my room and i see something that happens not in my room and I'm able to verify that in my own experience. To me, um, I make the inference from that that there's a God because if the mind of a single person can exist without material, without um, like the material being present, if you understand what I'm saying, then I believe consciousness could be. I don't know what you're talking about. So, okay, I'm, I'm using. I just, I'm, I'm just wondering I, what in your experience makes you believe that a mind created the universe. Should I just like state bluntly what the experience I had was, and we can go from there? Sure. Cool. That'll, that'll be easier. And obviously take this with a grain of salt. Um, in college, I had an injury in my body. And so I was doing a sort of relaxation method to sort of retrain my muscles on how to relax. Cause I have a lot of tension that was causing this injury in my pelvic floor to not heal. And so I, okay, you prayed to God and he healed it. No, 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 sure. no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. So I was doing a relaxation method for my pelvic floor cause it was tense. And I was doing like a yogic method, like a progressive relaxation situation. And I was doing this for like one hour a day or two hours a day, maybe three days a week. And on one of those times, I ended up like relaxing so much that I just went into like a deeply like meditative sort of trance state. And all of a sudden I was outside of my body in my dorm room. And this is on college, on my college campus in the dorm room. And in this state, I walked over to the window and I saw my friend that I had made in college like two weeks prior or three weeks prior walking down the path. So what I did is I, immediately woke myself up in real life right and went over to the window and there my friend was so that's just like an example of one of the experiences that sort of kind of like okay yeah i'm not sure about what that what a, that experience even contributes to a mind creating the universe so it mind can both be burns. sorry I, so yes you're right like because that like that, you can believe that, that you can be an atheist and have that experience and believe the contents of the experience that yes i agree but i i guess it lends credence to the idea that like your a mind lends credence it lends um it let, yeah I, I don't know how that would lend so lending well, credence deals with probability so oh, lending so, credence okay, wouldn't sorry. deal I with just wrong. Um, yeah so just having an experience and believing the contents of this experience wouldn't be uh I, that simplicator would not be what credence is credence deals with like um like some rational attitude you know indexed to your web of belief that would yeah. like you know promote some some belief towards like the contents of some item of that web of experience. Well, here's right? the inference I'm An making. Amazing system. Here's the inference I'm making from that experience, right? Is like the mind. So a mind that is created only as emergent from a brain, shouldn't be able to objectively view something uh, like if the brain Objective. is not present, if that, cause like I was seeing my friend walking down the, by the window, which was out of sight, by the way, of where I was laying on a bed. I had to, okay, well, look, bed. There's, there's just, okay, well, nothing there. Presumably, I don't see any reason to believe. In fact, it would just seem more plausible, the hypothesis that maybe you had a dream and it just was coincidence. In fact, that would just be more plausible due to like, um, you know, 
I, I, I do understand. Epistemically, yeah. More and consistent. Is I also just not being committed to like this, I don't know, maybe a supernatural right. like or some different notion of substance of the mind where it can be projected out of the brain or something like that. But and no, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't see, I can grant you yeah, that experience and the contents of the experience are true. Where right. from that do you get that a mind created the universe? So I, I'm making an inference because that experience, and I'm not saying this is- You keep saying, okay, you keep saying you're making an inference. But I'm making just an not... inference because um, I, like my experience showed me that, okay, the mind can sort of experience things without the brain because my brain was lying on a bed yet the mind was seeing out of a window that it shouldn't be able to see out of right because my eyes also were... that would i don't know how that would be objective in fact it would just seem to be just subjective inherently but it's yeah, sub continue well i it, just don't understand like, it's subjective in the sense that obviously this is happening within like the mind space but the fact that the mind space wasn't limited to where i was laying on the bed so sort that's of... not what objective is I, I understand. I know what objective is. What I'm the objective part of the experience is what what I'm saying is the fact that I was able to witness something. That okay. Was well, look. Happening. So yeah. So how are you getting that a mind created the universe? Because if consciousness can exist outside of a brain, then there might be some kind of substratum in which consciousness like is in a field or something. So, hold on. I got a phone call. Can you go like I don't know like sure. five seconds, ten seconds. Yeah, You there? No, Denny. Oh, yeah, I am. Sorry, I thought you were talking to someone else. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so where are you getting in a mind to create the universe? So comparatively speaking, with that experience and then comparing it to mystical experiences of other people, like near-death experiences and just the experiences of like... Um, meditators and you know just people all around the globe no matter what their religious background is who's who've had some kind of transcendental ex transcendental experience either through deep meditation or, i don't know what, or psychedelics what mean, i don't know what you mean by transcendental here but i i can use like a definition probably by william james or carl young it's just like a an experience that seems profound and transcendent in nature like you sort of lose but you use that was like clearly a circular definition let me i can give you a better definition i just but look that's that's fine i just want to get clear so I transcended. It. There's a few things that make something. Where are you getting that a mind created the universe from that experience? I'm making an inference based on why why are why can people all across the globe have like these experiences that seem to point towards some absolute truth or reality? Because in most of those, sort of nothing there is pointing to anything absolute. It's just pointing. I, I look, it's to me the case that there's this intersubjective experience people have. Right. I can even say everyone in the world has ha had it. Um, first, that doesn't doesn't even raise the probability that a mind created the universe. So I guess the inference is if in these experiences, there's two, there's two um, hy hypothesis, right? It's just the brain is creating that experience, right? And obviously DMT is in our brains and psychedelics sort of give it can create these experiences as well. Or um, people can connect to this sort of field of consciousness in some way. So those I mean, are the two I, hypotheses, I, I, right? Okay, I just don't see where the inference is. Can you just, where are you getting that a mind created the universe again? Doesn't seem like you're getting to that part. Like okay. that's equally compatible my, my with atheism. Inference. You can be my, an atheist and have- Right, and I agree with that, I agree. Okay, so where are you getting, you know, so where are you inferring God exists? Because in these experiences that people have, people seem to be left without a doubt that their like consciousness is ever present everywhere. Cause that's what- Okay, that's, that's fine. Where are you deriving that a God exists? Well, wouldn't it, I guess we could say, wouldn't God just be the sum total of all that is, but it's conscious? No, I don't even know what you're talking about. God would be a mind that created the universe and right. everyone can have, have this conscious experience and it could just not be true that a mind created the universe. So I don't know where you're, there's no inference there. The inference, okay. Do you think that in a material, you know, like a complete, in the materialist perspective, do you think consciousness is a field that is like ever present ever, everywhere? I'm assuming not. That's not a materialist held view. I don't even know what you're describing at all. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. The mind, all I take the mind to be is some entity that has mental features like knowledge, um, private experience, beliefs, right? And people different people have different, you know, perspectives, per perceptions, beliefs, knowledge, right. attitudes. I think yeah, I think where I think where we're getting tripped up here is maybe when you're uh, in your 
in your prompt, when you're using the word God, I think you were probably asking for someone to come up who, who believes in a sort of believes in God, like that a mind created universe. That's all. That's all I mean. Because I do believe a mind created the universe. It's just okay. But, okay well, the reason you provided has no entailment. Doesn't even like raise the probability or anything like that. It's equally as like probable that someone has this experience on an atheist view. I don't. Oh, I, don't I see where no, you're getting I agree. I will say. Wait. So then, that's not a rational reason to believe in God if you just agree. I agree that atheists can have experiences because if there is a transcendent reality, like a mind, let's say a mind that created the universe, it it would be universal, right? It wouldn't be like, oh, you're a Christian, so only you can connect, or oh, only Buddhists can connect. It would be like, obviously, everyone in the in the world could accidentally or deliberately have an experience connecting to that mind. Yes. Con like, wait, what? Connecting to that mind? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so you you said it like would be if an atheist can have an experience, it would sort of neglect or it would. Um, negate the validity of there being a mind, right? Not sure what that expression means either, but all I'm simply saying is you're not providing any reason to believe that a mind created the universe. That's all you said is that there's people who have experiences of which their mind just connects from their brain and they can see they have perceptions exterior to their physical their right. physical gunk, their right. body. So, exactly. Nothing there makes it that there's a mind that creates the universe at all. Well so let's say let's like it doesn't let's even say, have let's say like that, relevant features. Let's say a mind can exist outside of the physical gunk right like where 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 i don't know how to explain it what is the consciousness that is not um local to the brain anymore so if it can travel out and go and see things um, outside of you know your physical eyes what do you think that it, it's existing and that it's able to do that probably some kind of like field right some field where conscious no, a field. i don't even know like, what you mean by field here sorry i don't know what you mean by field here um like, like a substrate no, of reality that would allow consciousness. I don't, to I don't know. Up. I don't know what you mean by that either. Okay, you know how microwaves are flying through the air, but we can't see them. You know how like Micro air. You mean like, like light? Yeah. Like light is yeah. yeah, light that's outside yeah. of visible light spectrum, right? So these things are all flying through the air, but we can't see them. There's obviously a field, like a space, like space time, space time reality, right? Space time continuum. Okay, so you think there's a field in which the mind is present during. Um, the, outer body experiences. Okay, that's again compatible with there being no God. I can just grant you that. Nowhere in there being a new metaphysical field in which the mind could detach and exist alongside this field and have vertical perceptions disconnected of one's physical gunk makes it such that a mind created the universe. I, I don't see how one wouldn't lead to an inference of the other because, okay, let's say. I don't, you're not drawing an inference. And that just okay. seems like incredulity. So, so let's say, okay, I'm, I'll use just my experience. So brain is in bed, right? Mind okay. is out. You, I just want to see what you keep saying. Where are you getting this conditional statement? What's the argument for the conditional? That if you have an experience outside your body, uh -huh. then a God created the universe. Where so the fuck are you getting? If you're able to have an experience outside of your body, so your consciousness is outside of your body, where is your consciousness? Like, That's how just a question. It? I just want to know what's the argument that if you have an experience outside your body, that a mind created the universe. In fact, a mind, look, it's like, I don't, there could be a mind that created the universe and after creation doesn't persist. So you died. Af uh, son, like after sun's creation. So I, after you created the universe, I, I, there is no God anymore. And then you can have these experiences. Even, to be honest, I don't even think that's possible because I think like everything is not God. possible. And what because like, if you look at like sort of this ever renewing energy that is present, even in every like Adam, like, so now you're a pantheist apparently. Yes. I'm a pantheist, but it also like a pan. Okay. That's pantheist. not what I mean by God. Okay. I, what I mean by God is not the universe itself. Okay. So that's again, what I mean. you can't, you, I mean. yeah, but, you have to be, look, I'm not even trying to sound insultive and I hope I don't get banned, but you have to like literally be slow because I said very clearly, it's a mind that created the universe. And if you believe God is the universe, then a God, the universe isn't gonna create itself. That doesn't, that's not even coherent. So obviously what we're talking about isn't like the universe. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so yeah. do you believe that there's a mind that created the universe? I believe no. that the, the universe is happening in the existence of what we could call God's mind. Does that clear it up? Like the universe is is happening inside God's mind, but there is a transcendent God. Okay, that, so the, that the events of the universe are just mental content to God. Yes. Okay, where okay, that where are you getting from there being this experience of being outside of a body that we're just like the imagination of God again? There's no entailment either. So I could so possible there's just neither. Yeah, yeah. There, it is possible. It is like it's completely possible that whenever someone is sort of con connecting to um some transcendental experience, which I, I pulled up so that I can have a definition relating to a spiritual or non-physical realm. We'll just use that definition for, usually there are some universal things present in those experiences, like the loss of sense of self. Like there's no, so my, they'll say, I'll 
say there's no Danny in those experiences because the mind sort of just expands out and you're not even aware of like your human self in some of these experiences, like taking DMT, for example. So I just make the inference that because people all around the globe, whether they're taking psychedelics or having um, a spontaneous experience with or without psychedelic help or through deep meditation or prayer, I just make the inference that they are connecting to something. I guess you could say that's just me. You're not having. actually making an inference. You're just making a conditional. That's the difference between making an inference. So you're just going from because people universally have this out, outer body experience that therefore, if we have this outer body experience, then we're connected to the mind of God. We're inside the mind of God. We have these experiences. Therefore, we're inside the mind of God. I'm just asking you to defend the first premise. And you're not, you're just saying that I'm inferring this. You're not, you're not inferring anything. You're just like making, you're just having this like very <laughs> just unjustified conditional statement that I'm, I, I don't see why you would believe. <clears throat> like you agree it's possible people have an outer body experience and they're not in the mind of god right yes I, well okay. I, I don't know how it would be possible though because how could someone's mind exist outside wait is there of is there there's do you take it that there's like a logical contradiction i i no there isn't just i don't clear. see how someone i can see how someone could have an out-of-body experience yes because their our brains can hallucinate and do stuff like that i don't see how someone could have an out-of-body experience where their mind is actually witnessing something objective that they can verify when they wake up which happens for some near-death well, experiences. Yeah. I don't know how you would actually verify that your mind's outside your body. So when you say that it's objective that your mind's outside your body, I don't. there's no such thing as like metaphysical like testability where you can test well, there, if, there if actually, the mind was actually outside the body. There is an inst There are a few institutes that are, have actually started to look into this like phenomenon, but- Yeah, but that's like pseudo, like some pseudo- Well, we, we like, the, problem, the problem with that, like in for, like that inference is enough people from like the dawn of time have written about like out-of-body states and stuff that when, some people get together and decide, well, let's actually figure out what this is. It's amazing. Okay, look, I just want you to get, because I don't know, you're just rambling too much. Sorry. So you, you just understand that there's no contradiction that would obtain in the expression. I have a perception of my mind being outside my mind, am I outside my brain in conjunction with the proposition a mind didn't create the universe. There's no contradiction. Not in that statement, no, but. The, in the okay, case. so then it is just logically possible. So there's yeah. no, you're not inferring that be in virtue of the fact that we actually have perceptions outside which you've never even established to be vertical, right? So I don't, when you say they're objective, I don't even know how you justify those experiences. When I use the word objective, I just mean like, look, let's say I have an out-of-body experience tonight and I go to Timbuktu, like the middle of Mars or something. Let's say that. Obviously there's no way I would be able to verify that to anyone that I did in fact, like my soul like left my body. Yeah, but I'm just saying, say, I don't know how you would even verify but, it. But. but let's say I had one tonight and I went to my friend's house across the United States and saw what he was wearing and saw like exactly what he was doing. And I woke up and was like, hey, Jimmy, are you wearing your shark t-shirt right now? And were you doing this? And did you say this to your mom two seconds ago? No, that so that just seems to be, it just seems necessarily to be subjective, that experience, not objective. Right, it is because a just experience, but wouldn't no, you No, 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 just, just the fact that your mind's even leaving your body, that that true proposition is subjective due to just impartiality, okay. where the primacy of the event is just parasitic on pr like some private experience. So it is yeah. just necessarily subjective. But, yeah, so, so when it, it's not gonna, in no sense is it objective. So, sorry, so maybe I'm using the word objective falsely, but maybe veridical is the right word since I could obtain information, right, in the second scenario that I could verify later with, let, let's say, my friend. And if I asked him, and let him say, yes, exactly, I was wearing this and I did say that. Like, do you see the difference between my first example of going Wait, to Mars and that experience? It just, it's in, just having an experience and the experience, the contents of the experience um, being compatible with actual events doesn't make it such that, you know, the actual experience is vertical right like let's say i'm what's having some the, what's, like what's your definition what definition are you using for vert vertical all i mean by vertical experience is like some it's just like some view of philosophy of mind or i mean sorry philosophy of perception where you're directly observing like reality okay, right? okay. i'm saying you can have okay. like you can have like some dilution such that certain um certain objects feature in your experience over actual objects that are not actually occurring right let's say uh -huh. um it just happens to be that there's like some mental representation projected on your actual experience. Yes, yes. Where there's a water bottle on the desk, right? right? But let's say the projection of the water bottle is actually covering an actual water bottle that's on the desk. So it happens to be the same brand, the same positioning, but you're not actually having the vertical experience of seeing the water bottle just because there's like a filtered perception that's right. on top of the actual the world, such that right. like it's just in accordance with what the actual world relays and it's just not, it's not vertical in that sense. So look, just because like nothing then would establish the vertical verticality of your experience just because yeah, right. like your your friend testifies that such event happened so it's Wait. still compatible with, with the contents of the experience not being true well but how would the second case be sort of like considered um i think you use the word like delusion if in the if in the sense it was 
sort of like an actual witnessing of the events just outside the mind? How would that be a sort of delusion if, like, let's say I did it 10 times and I was, I was able to do it all 10 times, like give an accurate thing. Would that still, would you still call that a sort of hallucination or a subjective experience? But let's say I got it right 10 times out of 10 times. Would, would that change how you would describe the experience or no? Um, I'm not sure what you're like, just you like having, I don't know. Are you let's just say, saying that the event let's say happens had, a number of times? Let's say I, I have 10 spontaneous out of body experiences. Right. And let's say, um, I choose 10 different friends to go to like in those 10 experiences. And after those 10 experiences, I, um, I am able to verify with the friend that whatever I saw them doing and wearing and all that stuff, it was in fact accurate to what they were. Would, would that change how you're viewing the experience? Well, yeah, that would raise the probability of the events, you know, actually happening. If you just, you know, generate some prediction that's successful under the hypothesis that, you know, you would have, you'd predict these certain experiences if they were vertical, that they would just correspond with the testimony or right. anecdote of, you know, or like, so, but, but that, you know, it still can be metaphysically, that's the thing about ampliative reasoning, right? Nothing about, even saying, if it just that? happens, every, okay. ampliative reasoning is just reasoning that deals that with like, um, you know, induction and abduction, right? Like probability and plausibility. Uh-huh. Well, wait, 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 like, let's say, okay, I'm, I'm basically trying to get you to admit that after a certain amount of experiences, and let's say I, they were verifiable, um, after like enough to be probably, uh, um, statistically, like, look, here, here's a basic example of what I'm trying to say. Like, let's say, um, I have a hypothesis that the coin is fair. So I flip it a million times and under the predict the prediction, um, let's say that the, the, um, the coin is fair. I make a machine that flips the, co the coin the exact same ways. And we're in some like scientific room that acts as a vacuum such that there's no additional environmental facts that are going to be in the array of contributing to the outcome of the coin toss. So then I put the coin in the machine and I let it toss a million times and it happens that 50% of the time it was tails and the other 50 was heads. So now that would be like, you know, outstanding strong evidence that the coin is fair. The uh -huh. thing is it can still be metaphysically like there can still be this metaphysical feature that contributes to like it not actually being equal. Like the two sides of the coin are not fair, right? Let's say one side is like, uh, zero point, it's just point zero, infinite zeros repeating in a one after. Uh -huh. right? So but it's just like, fair, it's infinitely fair I see. yeah, it's yeah. infinitely testimony, like, you know, less probable such so okay. that it's just not, they're not equal. Right. But okay. you know, no number of like empirical tests would actually, right. That's just the thing about ampliative reasoning or reasoning that deals with like empirical studies or probability okay. and plausibility. They're not going to ever deduce these metaphysically certain propositions. Oh, thanks for, yeah. yeah thank you. I see. So the, okay. the congrats, by the way. Yeah, this is tough. Like, I'll, this is this is really tough because, um, yeah, because there's what I would deem like enough for me to sort of believe in a higher sort of system that I belong in, and then there's like what I can actually logically like debate someone or like convince someone else of, which is not what I'm trying to do. But for the sake of this debate, I am. So, but it's it, just it's just logically possible um, that you know. But okay, but I'm trying to get to at like let's say it's like an intensely small um, probability that someone was able to have like, let's say a hundred of these experiences and out of 99 of them, they received accurate information. So just to create the baseline that, okay, a mind can somehow exist outside of the brain as a starting point. And then I think what you're sort of asking is, okay, even if we gave it, if we gave that, how would that prove the existence of a mind that could be yours, right? Yeah, I'm not I don't see how it raises the probability or anything or entails that there's a mind that could have the universe. Right. So my, 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 um, infer, I guess I shouldn't use that word. Um, so if a mind can exist outside of a body and like objectively perceive events, so, so we can deduct from that, that the person isn't just hallucinating an experience, right? They're actually yeah. going out. Their mind is traveling through something, right? To be able to go across, you know, let's say the continent and go witness something. What's it? it might just be space. We don't have to pause in a new field. But what is it traveling with, though? Like, what? Um, like, does it have a mass? Like, is it electromagnetic? Like, what is the mind traveling with, right? Oh. Um, so I guess I'm, what I'm saying is, it can still be natural. If the mind is traveling in something without like a physical counterpart, then that sort of like gives the deduction of like, oh, maybe this thing that the mind can travel through is everywhere, like everywhere in the known universe, which would mean like mind. No, to be clear, I'm just like, like I'm a nihilist about muriology. So I don't think things are composed of stuff. So that's one thing, but also so you can just be uh, like, a, what does that mean? Um, mirror, what you said, I know what a nihilist is. Uh, muriology is just like the a metaphysical, um, metaph it's the metaphysical field that talks about composition. 
And I just don't, nihilism is just the view that, you know, or at least index some reality, that there is no such thing as composition. That I don't believe there is composed things. So, right. So are you just saying that everything essentially is energy and then it just sort of takes on the... Well, I'm not saying that's fundamentally energy. I'm not, I don't have any view about that. I'm like, just saying I don't believe things are composed at all. So do you, okay. Because, okay. Walk me through that. You don't think that things are composed, like a light bulb. And I'm not a realist about substances either. So there doesn't have to be like an actual thing that the mind has to be in. Wait, walk me through like what um, com uh, what you said. The Nihilism about composition. Composition, yeah. Like what is oh. composition? Something having composition. Yeah, so I think the reason, well, well, typically when one says something's composite, there's like a set of facets that contribute to the identity of the object, right? Like a chair is composed of like a set of like an arrangement of particles, right? And that's right. the set of particles composed the chair. Uh -huh. And I just, I deny that view. I don't think there are things like chairs. I think there's things we psychologically associate with this conceptual aggrand aggrandization that we're like psychologically disposed to believing. Um, my okay. views for like um, neurological nihilism are just, I find there to be too much complication with the paradoxes, like Sorites paradox and stuff like that, or the ship of the, the whatever, you know what I'm, hopefully you know what I'm talking um, about. I, what is, or, what is the, what is that? The shift, shif yeah, I, sorry, I'm be really bad with words as you. It, it's just like a, a philosophical puzzle that deals with, um, uh, these Theseus or Thebius. I don't, I don't remember. Look, I, I have terrible memory. It doesn't even matter. Let's just say it's fucking Aristotle. Um, I would have to agree with you though. Aristotle gets a new, sorry. I, I agree with you with the compositional thing in the sense that I don't, yeah, yeah like the chair, the chair is a psychological concept that we sort of project onto reality. Cause like the brain. The, the yeah, but the I'm also not a realist about substance. I don't think things sustain. Um, like there's like like I don't know things that like some an item sustains, you know, like plain Wait. substance or something. Okay, so, but like so the chair though is obviously a chair and not a table. So what makes the chair a chair and not a table? Is it just because we have psychologically deduced it as a chair, or is that what you're kind of saying? Or um. Yeah, that there's just, so the objects. Chair. So under neurological nihilism, there's just no composition. That every particle is fundamentally independent, and you know there's not like this oh, metaphysical right. connection between these fundamental entities. We just psychologically see an arrangement that is um, yes. in our perception not identical to certain other states of affairs or certain other directionalities we might point our heads towards, and like we just you know I constantly see yeah. certain objects in that in our experience such that right. they resemble those things. But right. you know the the particles don't compose the chair. It's just we psychologically make this notion right. of comp composition. I see what you're saying. Because like the particles are just the same old particles. They're they're not arranged as like an essence of a chair. Is that what you're kind of yeah. like? Is that like the whole idea of like Pluto's forms in a way like everything has an essence, the essence of a dog, the essence of a chair? Yeah, so basically what I'm trying to get with this is you don't have to believe the mind exists in something at all. That, you know, it's composed of like a range of things or that it exists in some plane or some substance. Um, you can just believe the mind is just outside the body. And although it might, you know, be puzzling or just, um, you know, maybe it's like some like soy generous notion you have now about like, that it might just be unfamiliar about thinking of something outside anything. Um, and you just might not make sense of it, but. Right. Um, well, I'll have know, to we, make, like. But even look, even if I grant you that the mind has to be in something, right? We can say it's in some brain plane, right? And in the brain plane, that's how right. it travels across the globe at light speeds or whatever. Well, I guess that's like, like a point I guess I could have gone off of was like, let's say, that I was convinced that I had a few ver veridical experiences, right? And you, you, your question is, how would that mean that there's a God? My inference from my experience would be, well, if my mind can exist outside of the brain anyway, then when the, the physical brain dies, then my mind will still exist in some form, perhaps, since it doesn't even need the brain anyway to seem to travel to all these places, right? So that would lead me to infer, oh, if- You can, s wait, if, no, that's actually, so just to be clear, you can still be a physicalist about the mind um, and, you can still even be a reductive physicalist about the mind and still have these experiences right. such that the experiences, the mind's still physical, right? Just due to supervenience, right? And we can just say like- Can I ask you a question? What, ex like, let's say that these experiences are legitimate, right? Like, and let's say that you could you could have them, like you. Yeah, is I wouldn't believe any, a mind created the universe from that. Is like, there continue. any experience that you could have that like would sort of give you evidence one way or the other that a God or like a mind beyond all minds created everything? Like if, you, let's say you could have this experience, is there a, a certain kind of experience that you could have that would um, convince no. you? Of? In my opinion, I think the God hypothesis is a just so story. So I think it's just evidentially inert, inherently. Right. So there can be evidence for the hypothesis there's a God. Right. That's why I just take the view, it's just like inherently the, I think 
part of the problem. Now, look, it can still be true that a mind did create the universe, right? To say that it's not rational, it just means under like these, this normative notion of justification and, you know, uh, you know, having our beliefs, like our beliefs all act in accord with evidence, right? There can be true, you know, like I'm surely you've heard of skeptical scenarios, right? Like a, a demon is radically like Descartes or like I'm a brain in a vet, right? And yeah, so yeah. maybe there's, there's no evidence, you know, because again, just like the brain in a vet hypothesis, the brain in a vet hypothesis is evidentially inert. Right, because I can't predict anything in the brain in a vet scenario, right? Exactly, and well, and I guess it, this I I could say that it's not. Well, I the reason I think it's more rational to believe in a sort of consciousness that created everything else is, like when we see how everything physical and material just reduces to some infinitely small thing where it ends up just being empty anyway. Like nine, what is it, ninety nine point nine percent empty space? But even when we let's say when we're advanced enough to even view further into an atom, for example, or an electron, I think we'll see that there's like just nothing there. And so how can there, like nothing be there, but it creates this material sort of world. And my inference on that is that like, we could be in a simulation or something, but what would be the intention of this simulation sort of um, um, manifesting in the way it does with with individuals, like people, animals, planets, everything to have an experience? Like what would, why would, why would consciousness take on this role if that and, look, so yeah, it's it's obviously a puzzling and intriguing question. Of course, you know, not even to sound like an ass. Obviously, that's not like reason. Just the, the mere question doesn't isn't reason to believe in God. And again, I just take it that the God hypothesis is a just so story. So it's evidentially inert. So it's Wait, not going to be what, reason sorry. giving. It's a what story? Sorry, what is that? Just so story. Oh, so what what does it's that some, mean? It's some it's it's a type of um, superficial hypothesis that's posited to explain data, but the the explanation. Um, is ad hoc or it's mechanistically um epistemically indeterministic or we're just not cognizant of how um this hypo this hypothesis would actually how would actually function uh doesn't generate predictions stuff like that is what i typically take to be a just so story right and in the god hypothesis like god you know let's say like oh we're conscious beings you know what explains consciousness mm -hmm. you know you might be inclined to saying well god can explain consciousness but we don't know how god explains consciousness we don't know why if he's a mind so presumably right. he he desired to make it so in the hypothesis we don't know anything in the background that informs us of why god desired to make it we don't know uh the right. processation that went into god um you know making manifesting this universe and stuff like that that just make it such that the hypothesis isn't actually informative at all right usually a hypothesis is supposed to be um like an explanatory relation that informs us as to as you a, know, something that we have a gap in knowledge on probably yeah right. but it doesn't actually in fact we might even say that the god hypothesis generates more questions like you know right. in, in in merely we can say it's a brute fact too you always know that's an alternative it could just be a brute fact so there's not actually an explanation for how consciousness arises, right it might just be brute that it you know some like right by the it just might be a brute fact by the age of i don't know like a month old that you start developing conscious unexplained uh -huh. or something like that and you know you might be like a quietist so there's like no need, need to dispute that but in the god hypothesis you're not you're not informing us you're just saying some entity of a substance we can't perceive made the universe we don't know how or why um we don't even know if it's logically possible because we don't know the metaphysical metaphysical or the logical relation between these metaphysical substances and how they interplay on a logical scale because we don't actually they're just like semantically foreign they're not even so like i don't even think supernatural i don't make sense of what it means for something to be supernatural well um, and i i wouldn't use like let, when people talk about sort of anomalous experiences, for example, I never describe them as supernatural either. And the reason is, is because if they can happen at all, there's something in the natural world that we don't know yet that can explain it. My explanation personally is that all of these sort of anomalous experiences that people claim to have or whatever, um, I, they make sense to me personally when I see everything as like consciousness sort of created the like this sort of illusion of a physical reality that we're having an experience in because that makes sense how someone could have like let's say esp or like see a ghost or whatever because if everything's just happening within this sort of mind of god and it's all sort of like a mental construct anyway these experiences are not that anomalous to me but if they're anomalous if you sort of take the materialist viewpoint that like everything physical is like literally physical which i don't even know what that means like everything appears physical but at a subatomic level it's not um but look, we can even just so like I don't. This is like something Graham Priest does. It's just like a simple stock and horse objection, where we could just mirror um, a naturalistic hypothesis in exchange for a supernaturalistic one, in which it does integrate with science. I don't even know what it means to say God is a hypothesis. Right. I realize a hypothesis is like a scientific notion, and right. you know, God's not falsifiable. I wouldn't. Right. I think really I should.
in a way I shouldn't have come up because a difficulty I've, I realize is sort of, cause I take on the more Eastern perspective of God, like what a Buddhist would say is, well, in Buddhists don't even use the word God, but like the sort of a transcendent reality. And so the only difference I say between me and an atheist is cause I believe in mo like 99.9% .9 of what an atheist believes in. It's just, I believe that it's conscious that we're, we're having an experience that is happening within consciousness, not that consciousness is emergent. So I guess that's idealism. Yeah, it seems like like a and, Kantian idealism problem. And that's where the when your question is, do you believe in God? That's I probably wasn't the best person to come up because, like, if I'm like a pantheist or panantheist, it's like okay, you're just describing the universe and calling it God. So, like, I am. I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just like a semant like semantics, like which is really really tough because someone pointed out when, when a sort of Buddhist talks about the transcendent reality or a Hindu. Um, they use a lot of terms that um, a scientist will just use to describe energy. So when you start getting to like the sub substance of all things, it all kind of just describing the same thing, just like some something that's within and behind all things somehow. And that's just what I would call God. Um, I mean, I don't know, nothing insofar as what you've described even seems motivating for the view of whatever you want to say, pantheism or panentheism. Um, neither seem like um warranting epistemically but epistemic me yeah. meaning like um like how people arrive at knowledge right yeah like there's well, like the the, you didn't really present justification or the like justification. For it would be is i have to admit for my experience i already did believe in god it just was through the sense of a christian god for a while and then i sort of just rejected that that sort of oversimplification of it and started realizing that no matter where someone was or what their like religious background is, people in from the dawn of ta time have reported um, like experiences or descriptions of a sort of transcendent being or whatever. And to me, I'm just choosing, I guess, to believe that there's a transcendent reality that these people are all connecting to. I guess that's it. It's just a choice. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, just merely choosing a belief wouldn't obviously wouldn't qualify as rational. Right. But if you're just fine with accepting, because you know the typical theist who's not panentheist. Their beliefs in God, they they think there's evidence. They 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 might even say like very robust claims, like it's metaphysically or logically necessary a God exists, stuff like that. Um, some of them, you know, the typical apologist wants to deny that's on pure faith. Sometimes they say divine revelation and that it's um, that, irrejectable or something. That's the thing I've been noticing when I sort of have been uh, watching the atheist or Christian debates is the the Christian will like use the evidence that's relevant, but then deny the evidence that's not, and then ultimately it just comes down to faith. So it's like, is it a faith or is it an evidence to choose? So for me, it's mm -hmm. the same. I think uh, it's it's faith and then whatever evidence I get in my life, I just choose to believe it's that. So I guess to be intellectually honest, I would have to say it's the, it's the faith that comes before rationale. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I, oh, I almost ended a live. No, yeah, I mean, I applaud you on being rational. And I also applaud you for like willing to work with me to try and understand your view. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know how long you've been up here, but I don't know if you've seen the first guest. I don't know if Mike is still here, but the, but um, the first guest who was here in this live was, um, you know what tag is, right? Tag? Like the game? Like, is that what you said? No. Um, okay. So do you know what like presuppositional apologetics is? Um, I might know. Can you just give me a rundown, a basic rundown? I know what apologetic is. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of someone named Dark Dawkins or seen him on TikTok? Probably. Is he a Christian? Debater? Or Jay Dyer. Yeah. Have you seen Jay Dyer? I think so. Yeah, well, they're, they're these two people who say that um, these very weird views that um, we all believe in God and that atheists suppress it and that it's some trans transcendental concept that grounds our perception and our understanding of the world, just like time, like in order to experience, we must have time. And that, um, you know, there's no such thing as a possible world in which we have experiences without the divine Christian God. Usually precepts are only, like, I've only ever seen Christian precepts in my life. So the presupposition is that Christianity is true, and they're coming from that place. Is that what a presupposition apologetics is? Like, they're coming from the place that they're... Um, it's they're called precept through. because they don't actually defend the claim that you can, that you can't, they, they instead of, you know, defending the claim, you can't have perceptions oh, without they the Christian God. Right. They, they say, give me your worldview, and let's see if we make sense of it without of a God. Without of God. Right. And br pretty much it boils down to um, some gibberish, a thing that is inherently a feature in just like Christianity. They want to say like, oh, but our worldview has the divine absolute that constitutes the the persistence of the uniformity 
of particulars and arrange our perceptions such that I you can't have yeah they literally say right. philosophical garbage I, I've I engaged with i've engaged with jay dyer i've engaged with dark dawkins um you know even phds like alex melpass have talked with them and, and literally straightforwardly said they literally straightforwardly said you're saying gibberish like literally like they are phds and the words you're using is just a word salad um yeah. they, they don't I, defend anything it's just yeah i'm and i'm horrible at debates because my um I think I just fucked up my brain from college, to be honest. I did too many, uh, I did drink too long, drink too much. But um, that what's interesting, though, I guess, from your side is usually if I were to make the argument with someone else, like an atheist, like an atheist friend, that like out of body experiences are possible and that you can achieve sort of vertical evidence, I think to, to them, that would be sort of evidence toward a sort of transcendent reality or consciousness. So I guess I'm that's where I'm confused about like why, if something, oh, that well, possible. this is kind of happened with my earlier guest that we went over the Kalam, um and he said after talking with me he doesn't make sense of the argument and so either neither of the two premises um and he said like he was kind of like i'm not gonna lie he was kind of like uh meat writing about like how i like enlightened him to critical thinking or whatever you kind but, of it, for me too because like i i came with an idea of like okay if i could talk on this line of logic and experience this would sort of presuppose this but it but i guess you sort of enlightened me to that not being the case well, what happened with this guest was after he was like asking me questions about like, why do you think like so many people, like the overwhelming population believe in gods and religious, um, they have this like religious subscription or whatever. And this is the same reason for why maybe your friends would, you know, think this is evidence. Um, first, uh, I've never seen a single instance in which someone who doesn't uh, study like philosophy of any sort know what evidence is, right? Either philosophy of science or mathematics, like Bayesian epistemology. So I doubt anyone even knows how, like if I go to a random stranger on the, on the street, they might say something like the Oxford Dictionary. I can't hear myself in the background. Oh, should I log out or go out and get back in? Um, is it maybe? Gone? Wait, let me hear myself. No, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't expect most people to even under have a good understanding about about the terms they use in contexts like these. Like just the same way someone would say, "Oh, that's not logical." But you know they never took classes on formal logic. They don't know what inferences are. They don't know what natural deduction is. They don't know what the, the syntax of an inference is or truth preservation. They don't know any of the philosophical or logical lingo or nomenclature. Right. So, so they just th they throw out words like logical or they throw out words like evidence. And right. I take it that without a rudimentary understanding of like epistemology, mathematics, and philosophy of science, you're actually not going to really understand evidence properly. Right. That's typically the way. Um, like, like if I ask, like, you know, one of your friends who took it to be evidence, I ask them, did you do like Bayesian analysis? Like if I just ask them that, they're not going to know what the hell I'm talking right. about. So they're not really going to know, you know, the systematic right. approach of analyzing evidence. But to be like, it is evidence or not. To be fair, like when dealing with these kind of personal beliefs, like, let's say when you go to the store and you, you, there's two things on the shelf and you haven't, and you've had one and you know, it tastes good, like a, a strawberry and you know that you don't like bananas like someone could devise a very logical like scientific statement on why bananas are better but like when we're going about our day-to-day -day life with our per like and making decisions for ourselves like the evidence is kind of doesn't make doesn't matter right to a certain degree like we're just gonna like even if there's scientific evidence that says bananas are better like i'm still gonna no, there's no objective better this. right so what I, I guess what i'm saying is like as far as personal beliefs and stuff um like relying just like oh for every idea that you have or subscribe to, should the, should you um, put it through this like extensive um, scrutiny, like philosophical scrutiny? But we don't do that, right? You just do things that you like, or right? So I guess in relating to like, let's say I tell my friend something, it doesn't make sense that they would go through it with all of that scrutiny. It's like, oh, I had this idea, but I didn't even know that was possible. So if that is possible, then that changes my ideas without having to do the whole philosophical like mm -hmm. argument. Is does that make sense? What I'm saying? Like people don't make decisions based on. No, yeah, they, yeah, no, I agree. Typically, um, you know, uh, the beliefs of someone reflect their perception. Uh, that's not always the case, though. There are, I mean, not to say everyone's delusional or you know every experience, like you know maybe a, I don't know, feeling the Holy Ghost or being right. in an outer body experience means you're having a delusion. In fact, again, it may not even just be um, these psycho neurological or neurochemical or any of that. Um, maybe there's again, it could be metaphysically explained in some non. Uh, theological way too but you know there are cases in which you can actually analyze like there's um there's this one mathematician named john nash um where like he he actually he was having like um auditory and visual hallucinations for most of his life he lost his job doing it uh he got his job back and then he got uh took it into a psychiatric hospital because of it 
uh, he was still experiencing the hallucinations and stuff uh -huh. um and he, he almost like attacked his wife and stuff um and he he ended up like just like not listening to the voices or what he was seeing uh -huh. and he tried like analyzing um whether the experiences that he were that were being said to be not real actually acted in accord um with you know his mundane experiences such that he actually realized that he all the experiences that the psychologist described as hallucinations which he denied um he was considered paranoid and he went through shock therapy and it didn't help at all Wait, he ended so up just his experiences did map out onto reality or they did what do you mean they related to his mundane experience oh like you know seeing his wife cook in the kitchen versus you know seeing um you know uh, an fbi agent trying to you know tell him to join the pentagon and help stop the russian cold war oh this is the, like, the like, beautiful mind guy right with the, that movie the yeah movie. okay and so what was what's the what's you what's the sort of conclusion that you're trying to draw from that there's just yeah i'm just saying that there's some scenarios in which reflecting on your experiences can actually have you recognize the consistency of them in which you can you know rule them out even still continuously experiencing them right i guess when i get into conversations like these about like oh that's just a delusion like when i said sort of said my experience oh when i first was trying to talk about my experience someone in the chat was like um oh he had a psychotic break or a, whatever it was that they said um and my sort of counter argument to someone saying the sort of hallucination thing is um everyone is hallucinating 24 7. like we're our brain is creating a hallucination of our reality like we don't the color brown doesn't objectively exist neither does any sound the like the sounds and colors that you see in your day-to-day -day experience are all the your brain hallucinating that onto the data that it's um taking in through like your rods and cones and your eardrums it's translating data but it, you're not seeing an objective reality hardly ever um the only thing is when we call someone for delusional or schizophrenic well schizophrenia is real obviously people have it um is whether or not your delusion or hallucination is the same one that everyone else is having that's where okay. well to to respond about so color is just um inherently subjective such that i wouldn't say just because you're perceiving color in objects that you're having a hallucination you can still have again like vertical and again like views like disjunctivism or direct realism or whatever views of philosophy of perception where you do directly perceive like the external world and stuff like that you know light is just like um it's obviously some type of subjective experience right um the reason like any usually we're, we're subjectivists about like every predicate though right like when i say something is wet i don't think wet isn't like an objective right thing it's well, it's like a sensation subjective sensation my point um, is because i use that like when word. i say something spicy or whatever I use that word because that's how um, I've seen neuro um, neurologists describe it. They're, they'll say, yeah, we're hallucinating our reality in the sense that th what is objectively happening is not at all what you're seeing. Your brain paints a pretty picture for you. Um, and that's why like so many people can be in the same room and experience an event and then you get 20 different eyewitness accounts of what's going, like what happened. Um, and so well, I guess- I didn't make a broad claim like that. I'd be like- when no one's seen the real world, but- Like we're seeing, it's, it kind of seems like what's objective is what everyone, what like the most people agree on. No, that's not what objective mean. Well, like no, scientists don't talk about objectivity. Right. Well, I, my point is, is like, since your brain is not painting an accurate picture of reality, because if it was, we wouldn't be able to function, first of all, if our brain could perceive every microwave and every uh, light form, like every um, light on the past the spectrum, we wouldn't be able to drive a car anywhere. We, we, our visual field would be completely you know so that's what i mean is it's painting us the brain is painting us a picture and if you look at sort of like the definition of a hallucination it's like um it's like something that your brain well, is creating but that's not out there in the world it might not even be that you know it's just the case that our brain operates such that we have the best you know like this um anthrop like some anthropologic evolutionary like a uh, metaphysical account of the mind or something or the brain where like um you know evolved for like not for natural selection to like act in accord with because it, it just might not be the case that certain items in the world actually have like this predicate of perceptual right so it's not even like our brain is just not like it, there might just be items that don't are just not not possible to feature in perception at all right maybe they're either just oh i mean just I because so. they're too small yeah, that's not, definitely like true, I think. you know certain particles it's or like you know particles might not it's not even like non-perceptual because like our brain tries to limit what we can see so we can have a coherent perception of the world it's just like certain items we just like can't perceive like some flicker like water bears or certain ticks we don't not see them because we don't perceive reality directly it's just because um our perceptual faculties are limited such that we can't see certain entities that are of such a measure 
stuff like that. Right. But have you heard of, I, I don't know if this is off topic, but have you heard of those moles that use their nose and then their brain creates like a 3D picture of reality in their brain just by the sensor, sensory organs on their nose? So I, I forget what the, the name is. Yeah. So in, I guess that's, yeah, I guess my language was off. Like, I've seen TikToks about them. It's not that we're not seeing reality, that's for sure, like, or that there's not an objective reality. I guess I, the point I was making is, like, when the person was telling me that I was having a hallucination, I was trying to make the point that, like, you're hallucinating every day, so to speak. Because if you altered your, your chemicals just a little bit, you took, a like, one tab of LSD, you wouldn't be seeing the same things, even though the objective world stayed the same. Uh, I wouldn't say hallucinating, but um, I would just, you know, there's other things that would just, like, there's, like, senses of which you're not perceiving the world directly. It doesn't mean you're hallucinating. There might be other explanations, like maybe you have dust in your eye, you're seeing a white patch, um, or maybe there's certain environmental facts that feature such that when you like hear your friends say something, you mishear them and interpret what he said as something else, like what the phonology of it. But that's not like a hallucination. It's just so like- the def the def Oh, you're paused. I, I can't hear you when you're outside the app. Oh, sorry. So it said the apparent perception of something not present is the definition on Webster. And so if I use that for color, like the color red is not objectively present, but yet oh, well. we have the experience of red. So that's, that's not how it's typically used in like, you know, yeah, psychology. No, that's I like know. a, a Definitely, weak I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. Like no one, no psychologist is going to say that you're hallucinating that car over there. I was just sort of making a point on how all of our brains are painting us a picture. Um, I think people can have experiences where they're seeing a different picture. Mm -hmm. but anyway. No, yeah. Is there anyone requesting? Um, no, I, I think there's only 10 people in here. I think, I don't know. Cause my inbox shows way more than 10. I don't know how you actually check how much guests are in your live. It says I have 10, but in my, um, guest box, I can invite like over 20 people. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's no one's requesting. It just seems like viewers. So I might just restart the live because it's like dead. Sure. Um, well, it was a good conversation, and I, what you sort of made me realize is if I'm going to have a debate in the future, I'm going to have to figure out a way to make sense of how I'm drawing the conclusions that I'm drawing. Subscribe to my YouTube, everyone. I saw someone just leave the, the live. Subscribe to my YouTube before you leave, everyone. Yeah, continue. I was just going to say, like, if I'm going to debate someone in the future, I'm going to have to have a better idea of how to describe these things and how I'm making these inferential claims and stuff, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, it was fun. All right, peace. Have peace. a good one, everyone.